Hi guys. All right, there she is. I'm gonna go ahead and add Ebony. Everything. Because we did test it and it worked today. It doesn't against true it is a die for it. Yes! Yay! <laughs> yes. I literally was like, if it doesn't work, I'm going to throw it this entire phone. Mate, it just, I've been able to go live with other people. You can go live with other people. I don't know what I, you're doing, but we I, made it. We made it. Oh, my God. We made it. How are you doing, darling? I'm good. How are you, lovely? I'm loving the glasses and the head wrap and everything. Looking cute. Looking cute. This is for you. This hey, is for thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I love the blue in your locks. I was admiring it the other day. It looks so good. Cheers, cheers, cheers. You know, we're having fun this year with our hair. Well, you know, like, do you know, I haven't colored my hair in a while and I really want to go back there, but we'll come on to that. And then yeah, I was just like, where's my back. pink princess? Where's she going? I know, you know? I know, I know, I know. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I totally need to come up, but guys i'm so glad we're doing this ebony thank you so much for joining yes exactly she does look buff with the locks hi cousin <laughs> how are you doing <laughs> um guys i'd love to introduce you to ebony trichologist of hey. the most hey. <laughs> <laughs> and you know i thought like i was thinking about who's the best person to talk about this and i think like you're the best person to talk about the topic of hair growth Thank so you. today Thank we're going to be talking about the ins and outs of hair growth. Like one of the things that we get, because as you know, as Cara, you know, we meet customers, we provide them with recommended routines and products to guide them on their hair care journey. And one of the things we always get is my hair doesn't grow. Yeah. Like we hear that. Sense. It doesn't make sense. We hear <laughs> that. Exactly. We hear that over and over again. So I'm quite keen to debunk that idea with you yeah, um to kind of debunk is it true that <laughs> afro and curly hair does not grow rubbish 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 the thing i say to that is when i get like when people tell me that because i hear that a lot as well is um most of my clients have previously had a relaxer at some point in their life and i'm like how often did you go and relax your hair and they're like oh like every six to eight weeks because my regrowth will come through and i'm like so why is it that when you start to relax and your hair stops growing? Tell me. And they're like, oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> what was that? What was that? What was that? What was that that was coming was that? that was at the root? Yes. Huh? I don't <laughs> know. It was cotton. <laughs> Something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think people get misunderstood because they, some people kind of like have the misconception that their hair grows from like the ends and stuff but I'm like no it grows from your roots so you're going to see the new hair yeah. coming through here your problem might be here that you're not keeping it here so it feels like it's not moving past a certain length but here it's all right because if it wasn't growing you'd be bald it would eventually yeah. there'll be nothing left so if you've got hair in your head your hair is growing but is it is there like um is there anything around the rate at which the hair grows in so comparison to say for instance other textures it hasn't been studied or replicated well enough for me to say like yes for sure so all okay. hair will grow at about half an inch a month like a scalp hair there are some okay. studies that say that afro hair grows a little bit slower than that but i haven't seen it replicated enough for me to be like that's gospel but um yeah okay. about half an inch it'll vary from person to person so for me my hair grows quite slowly, but I have really good length retention. So that's why I feel like my yeah. hair grows like a weed that I can see that length really quickly. Whereas yeah. other people, they might yeah. find they only get like a quarter of an inch every month or less than that or a bit more than that. We have the girls with, you know, hypertrichosis where their hair grows yeah. and grows and grows and they'll be selling you products yes. saying, ah, it's this one now. Yeah. Like, no, your genetics. Yeah. That's what's really making the difference. Um, yeah. Also, I feel like, if you do a big chop, like say for like guys, for instance, they will go and get their hair cut every week, two weeks, three weeks, because their hair is growing. And you can see that big difference between, you know, being yeah, two, two. and like an inch. It's massive. You can tell the difference. But when you get to between yeah. like an inch and five inches and our hair's curly, it's going to shrink up. So we're not going to see it hanging and be like, oh, there's lots of length there. Yeah, It'll just be one day you started to hit different kind of like points. You know, you might be ear length and then a couple months later, you're like shoulder length. On average, I'll say we're growing about five, six inches every year of, of hair. So that's from like five. to 
bottom of the neck or so, depending. Yeah. People kind of yeah. on average. That's quite that's quite a lot. That's like yeah, but, gross. That's, <laughs> but that's length. But then the problem is length retention. So if okay. when we straighten our hair, we blow dry, we're like, oh, okay, inches, you know, we pull our hair down, we'll be cooking our yeah, neck. And you're like, look, okay, look, look. There's bare hair. <laughs> but um, if you're not protecting your ends, that's where we have the problem. Yeah. So you might be growing half an inch every month and losing three quarters of an inch. Ah, so that's and the so thing. It that's why. Like yeah, it's always like, oh, my hair's right. always there. And I'm like, if your hair stays in one position, it's growing. We have a problem at that position that it can't get past. Yeah. Okay, because I do, I definitely, I'm wearing braids right now, and mm -hmm. I definitely notice that whenever I take my braids out, it also feels like it's longer. Yeah. Which I think that people potentially also conflate this idea that braids makes your hair grow, but I don't think that that's true, no. right? Like, no, growing up, I heard it. that all the time. <laughs> like, it was like, put braids in, it makes yeah. your hair grow, but it doesn't. Like, it's a no, natural true. process that... From it what you're saying, it sounds like it does a natural it on active. the growth of your hair. What it would do is help protect those ends. So it might be that for the time you've got your braids in, you're not brushing your hair as frequently. You're not, you know, okay. doing styles that may have had potential for damage. But then people say, oh, but braids are protective style. I'm like, not for everybody and not by everyone. If I do your braids and it hurts or you're getting traction and things that are as heavy, the growth that you saw, you're going to undo it as soon as you take it out because there's something in your routine that's not allowing you to keep all that hair. And people will be like, yeah. you know, I've had my braids in for four weeks. Look, it's, you know, it's down here now. I'm like, sis, your extensions have just slipped a little bit. That's not all new growth. Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to be careful. It's going to be the same amount as your normal, regular growth. It's just how do you take care of your hair when it's not in those styles to um, maintain that, that length? yeah yeah this is this is so interesting because i feel like this is one of those topics where everyone's like i want it to grow i want it to grow i want it to grow but we seem to just keep doing the same things that yeah. produce the results that makes us feel like it's not great by the way if you're just joining um this live hello everybody we've hello, got hello, hello. lovely amazing trichologist ebony ajidua with us and together we are going hard on the topic of hair <laughs> growth covering the ins and outs so we've started with thinking about okay let's talk about the science behind it does it grow and everybody's telling me our hair grows half an inch. Yeah, half an inch. Half an inch every what? Every month. Every month. Every month. Our hair is growing half an inch every month. So you mentioned something that is quite interesting where you talked about how it's growing, but we just are just not retaining it. Can we expand on that? Like what are the things that we're doing that potentially is leading to breakage? Yeah. So I would say the first one is actually protective styling. And I know a lot of people, okay. the lights are going off, you know, they <laughs> <laughs> so, please drop in your questions if you have questions um, yeah. so, we can cover it. so with uh, protective styling people think that as long as my hair is like away and out of my hands it's protective but again there's so many factors that will make a protective style so no style is inherently protective just because it's like the, the style so like braids if you said oh yeah I'm going to get braids protective style I'm like what type of braids how much hair are you using how did the person that did it for you is their hands you know is their hand tough when you prepped your hair, did you blow dry and there was smoke coming out and then the ends of your hair were flying across the room? Did they put like half a pack of um, Eco Styler gel to slim it, like to smooth it down? What are the things that's happening all the way through? When you have the braids in, do you keep it in for three months? Do you wash your scalp while it's in? Do you moisturize your hair? Do you get regular trims? There's so many things that go into it. So it's never okay. just, is this style good or is this style bad? It's like, no, it's yeah. how does this style work for you? So for me, my hair doesn't like to be tied up. Like, I don't like having the back of yeah. my hair. It just really just irritates me. So any yeah. style that I have where my hair is pulled up, it's not going to be protective for me. Yeah. It? Whereas yeah. you might be, if my hair is out, it's going to be in my hands. I'm going to be playing with it. I'm going to be pulling it. So for yeah. me, braids is like, it's a way. I'll still wash my scalp every two weeks. I will yeah. still kind of moisturize my hair. You know, if we're carrying braids for three months, what are we expecting to happen? That when we take it out, all that shed hair, we don't moisturize it properly. We put it back in. Then we lose edges. We lose other parts. It's too yeah. heavy. You have to really consider how you do your styling. Like a bun can be protective. A puff can be yeah. protective. Twist out. Any style that allows you to kind of keep your hair clean and moisturized and yeah. the ends kind of like safe can be protective. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. That's it's so interesting that you mentioned that because like before I got this braid done, um, I literally was like that annoying client who <laughs> I was like, everything they brought, I was like, let me inspect that. Yeah, believe yeah, it, no, you believe it or not. Believe it or not, blue, like I thought Blue Magic was like a thing of the past, but Blue Magic is still no, alive and kicking yeah. in the streets. People are still using it. And she brought it. I was about to, and I was like, oh, no, don't do that. I, literally, I was like holding my hair because just trying to like brush That's it great. so vigorously. So it sounds like it's like we might think that it's protective, but it's like all the things that are leading up to getting that it's a whole process yeah it's not just like you know the day and the style you pick it's literally what goes on beforehand how did when they shampooed your scalp were they scratching and breaking the skin was it conditioned was it detangled well all of these things like play a big part um, and i think people kind of like think it's just like one miracle product or one miracle style or yeah. you know some magic thing i'm like it's consistency it's what you do day in day out and a lot of it's internal so like i said yeah. this, some of us our genetics is that our hair grows super fast and it stays in a growth phase for very long. Some of us, it won't stay in that growth phase for very long or us, our, our strands are much more delicate. So they need a lot more care. We have to really be personalized, which is what Cara does, which is great. Mm. Be, pers mm. be personalized about your hair care and think, yes. how does this work for me? So some of my clients can go and get locks and um, do yeah. braids all the time. And other ones I'm like, you can't do this just yet. We need to work. Yeah. Get your, your routine down and then we can think about doing other things before you kind of go and start playing in your hair too much. Yeah. So something that you mentioned, let's take one of those like bit by bit. So you mentioned, so I think that we've spoken about on the channel, like around like when they're getting your braids on with it not being too tight. Yeah. Because for obvious reasons, we lose all of this. But you mentioned gel. Mm -hmm. Like what does gel do? So like, I don't know what's happened to everybody's grip game, but when I was like learning to do hair, we didn't have all these yeah. gels and smoothings. You had to be able to like yeah. hold the hair and get it inside the first time. Yeah. Um, I have no problem with gels. I think it's just the way that they use. So when you're putting gel on your hair before you put um, extensions on or anything like that, you have to remember that gel is forming like a cast around your hair. So that means yeah. moisture can't get in or out. So then if you then have that style, you've got extension on there. If you think how much... I, like added weight is on your hair strand now so this hair is yeah. used to just carrying itself nothing on it you've gone and put half a pack of extensions expressions on there and then you know two liters of gel on top it's gonna pull it down <laughs> it doesn't feel heavy to you think about you've just gone from your normal hair weight plus yeah. the weight of your extension like... plus all the product on top and you're kind of like your hair was just looking at you thinking you think i won't drop out watch me watch me <laughs> <laughs> me, not today not tomorrow but the next time you try and play these games with me yeah i'm going to hit the floor i love it 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 so we've got a question there i'm gonna second that 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 you know what that visual helps um because i was thinking okay gel is drying but actually the way it you described like, it yeah, yeah. yeah but the way you described it is a lot more like visual because it's kind of like there's a physical barrier. So even if you're putting other stuff on it, your hair's actually not even taking it in. No, it's that way. So it's just sitting. Sitting on top. Whew. Oh my God, you are amazing. Okay, hang on, there's a question. Are there ingredients that prolong the hair growth phase or is it just marketing? Okay, why don't we start with what are the, the hair growth phases? Okay, cool. So our hair kind of grows in like three main stages. Um, it'll grow for a bit called the anagen phase or rest. And then it'll uh, go to the shedding phase, which is called telogen. So it goes through that. Like every hair will grow, rest and drop out. It's kind of like the main cycle that it goes through. Uh, the growing phase is about five to seven years. Um, it'll rest for, I think it's like up to three months. Forgive me. I can't remember everything. I should have, you know, yes, done a little yes. bit of revision, but generals. And then it will shed and then it will yes. go back into that, that growing phase. So the shedding yes. that we see when wash day, you know, those long strands of hair, that's normal. About... 10% of our hair is always in the shedding phase about 80% um, is in the um, growing phase and then kind of like the rest is in catch in that resting phase so okay. there are some things that can prolong that growing phase for us but usually what it will do is just take us back to our optimum so if you think about your genetics and your health and everything this is like your optimum growing rate here where everything is in perfect alignment you know you've got everything you need so if you're sick or your hormones are bad or you're 
ill, you've got like, you're taking medications, it will drop down your optimum, yeah? If your you. genetics, you know, you're on the lower end of your hair and your growth maybe for five years before dropping out where it's fine and fragile, you see your optimum keeps on going down. And these are the things yeah. we don't really take into account. We're like, oh, products. And it's just like, hello, you've got a vitamin deficiency. You haven't had no citrus fruits for two yeah. weeks. <laughs> you know, yeah. your body's crying for some vitamins, some apples, some fruits or something. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, let me go and put this like stimulating oil. And it's like, this yeah. is stimulating. I ain't got nothing yeah. in me to even try and grow. <laughs> the I'm phone call is literally like, I can't, I actually can't help you. Honestly, it's on airplane mode. It's just like, you think that you're doing something, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> have you seen that? Have you, <laughs> have you seen that meme where it's like eating all the junk food and then like putting like avocado in the hair? But like, but it's why? 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 Are you <laughs> but it's like your body. Food? Like we actually have no nutrients to work off of. But what makes actually, me laugh? Because yeah? I'm, I'm a scientist yeah. for it, so I'm like, where's your digestive system on your scalp and on your head? Because when you eat foods, you have to chew it. So mastication, there's um, enzymes in your saliva. You have to swallow Ooh. it. It then goes and gets more um, broken down into like proteins, carbohydrates, not even proteins, amino yeah. acids, you know, those kind of things. And then gets distributed through your bloodstream to where it needs to go. So when you slap on avocado and egg and mayonnaise and all the oils that you've got from, you know, the Amazon rainforest and the, the deep down in the middle of the Sahara Desert, yeah? I'm like, okay, so firstly, how is it penetrating? Because those are big yeah. like, um, molecules. They can't get inside the hair. Yeah. And then what they're going to do is like, okay. sit on top, or maybe some of them will, like, you know, join in a little bit. But as soon as you remove it, it's gone. And then you wash yeah. your hair with water and it's scrambled egg, and I'm just thinking, okay, you made salads. What was the, <laughs> what was the purpose of this? When if you'd eaten those things... It would have been better for you. Rice water is also there. Don't think that you people are getting away thinking, oh, my rice water is... No, no, no. You're there as well. I'm like... Oh, okay, okay. Oh, my God. We need to take each of those. We need to take each of those. Okay, all right. So, okay. So, that's, again, another interesting visual. Like, there's no digestion that is going on when we're applying it to a scalp. But someone... I saw something. I put it up on my Instagram. I saw something where somebody had, like... A, aloe vera and then have orange rinds on the hair and i put it up and a lot of people were like some people were like oh i swear aloe vera works for me i like aloe vera um yeah some people are like i swear aloe vera does so does it work i don't know about growth um aloe vera is really okay. good because it has like wound healing properties so it's good for like inflammation okay. and if you have like right. very dry scalp it's very moisturizing so it's good ah, if okay. like you've got um dry sensitive flaky scalp okay. sensitive scalp it's great for kind of like healing the skin um in okay. terms of growth i don't know i haven't seen it right, okay. like capacity, but i know it's good for like okay. prepping the hair right okay, orange okay, rind, okay. That okay. Was a again new one. i don't know about yeah that. the orange rind i thought was a new one same way i saw sweet potato amongst other things but then i was then thinking that maybe it's just like you know the way when you have a bath and you put flowers in the bath. I mean, I don't, but I understand, understand them. I need to talk about my bath. <laughs> 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 okay, I'm a bit extra. But, like, it's the only, the only thing that is relaxed in enjoyment. your body. It's for enjoyment. Maybe, yeah, exactly. It's yeah, just it's for maybe the orange rind is just for enjoyment. Like, that was where I kind of ended up with that. But, um, but okay, so that's interesting. Like, there's actually a scientific thing that aloe vera would do but then it's not necessarily for the hair follicles it's more for the scalp it sounds yeah like. more for the skin yeah yeah it's got really good yeah. uh, we, so like if you had like a cut or something it's good yeah. um to like put on it it promotes healing yeah 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 okay hang on someone said high covered and curly growth is is determined by internal factors okay um, but how do these growth oils work because it <laughs> seems there are so many people showing growth okay would you say that the oil is helping with retaining length? Hi, Covered and Curly. So you must be new to um, the world of ebony because I don't promote oils here, pure oils. Um, when it comes to growth oils, um, uh, not to not to you know uh, yeah. say anything bad about anybody's business. This is general. Yeah. Um, I don't believe in them. Um, I don't feel like they work. Um, in my experience, I feel like oils on the scalp cause more problems than they do anything helpful. Yes, some people might, you know, find some benefits, but 
nine out of ten times the people that I see have issues from using pure oils on their hair and scalp. It's actually preventing them from getting to where they want to be. And um, I have a whole podcast about it. Um, the growth that we see. So, as I said at the beginning, your hair is growing regardless of what you do. Even if mm. I decided today I'm not going to wash my hair, I'm not going to moisturise, I'm not going to do anything to it. It's just a bodily process. I can't control the growth yeah. the same way I can't control my heartbeat or my breathing. Yeah. Um, it's all determined um, internally. Like, you know, it's, it was doing this before I could think about it. Even when I die for a little bit while I'm in the, in the ground or whatever, my hair will still be growing, my nails will still be growing because it's a bodily process that just happens by itself. Some people, a lot of people have things like telogen effluvium. So where their hair goes into the shedding phase, something internally has caused it to go into that phase quicker than it should have okay. been. So it was actively growing. And as I said, it might be illness. It could be you just had a baby. It could be changed medication. It could be stress, physical, or emotional. Something in your life has changed and your body is just like, I don't know what you did, mm. but I need to recalibrate. Okay. I need to get back to like my, my baseline. So it will turn off everything that's non-essential. Your hair is the first one to go. It, your body does not mm. care about your hair. It's such like a yeah. drain of energy. So when it's just like, I only have limited resources, I'm going to focus on keeping you alive. Your brain, your heart, your lungs, your digestion. Those are the things I care about. This, your hair that yeah. you think is something, <laughs> watch me get rid of it. So we're yeah. going to shed and for a little bit. But that is usually temporary and it's usually um, spontaneous regeneration. So it might be that I, for example, I had COVID in December. So I know probably like from February or so, my hair's going to start shedding a little bit because I was really sick. In about oh, three months after that, my hair's going to be fine again because my body's got okay. back to where it was. The thing is because okay. it's delayed. So there'll be a trigger. And then about three months later, that's when you see like the physical signs of it. About three okay. to six months after that, your hair will be like, okay, I'm done. So you were just thinking, you know, in February now, when my hair starts shedding, I'm going to be like, oh, what did I do this week? What did I do? What did I do? Mm -hmm. And my body's just like, babe, it wasn't you. You, had, you were sick in December. Remember, I told you I was going to oh, get rid of it. Okay. You didn't hear me. And then when it gets to like March, I've been, I mean, like uh, May or June, where I've been applying products and doing whatever. My body's just looking at me like, look at you taking credit for what I did. You silly girl. You know, it was me that did this. I got rid of it. I brought it back. You know, just there like, yeah, it was this. Oh my God. I did handstands every day. I meditated. I did da da da. These things are, are beneficial, like supplementary, okay. but it's not going to be what causes it to go and to come back. Yeah, yeah, I see. I see. Um, so so it sounds like I think this is good news, actually. Like yeah. Guys, for anybody out there who thinks that their hair is not growing, this is good news. Like, it's happening. Like, it is. it's a natural. The same way our scalp um, does. We spoke to Dr. Mary Summerland, and she was like, your scalp produces its own conditioner for you, via sebum. Yep. Our hair <laughs> is also growing. So now that means that actually it sounds like where we need to be thinking about our, what are the things within our control, which is thinking about, okay, how are we actually protecting yep. our hair, right? Mm -hmm. So let's, so you've spoken about kind of like, okay, have you had fruits? Have you had your vitamin D? Have you da 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 da? Can we talk about the effect of supplements on yep. hair growth? Because certainly there are some, similar to growth oils, there are obviously supplements, the most popular one being biotin um being used for hair growth so can we maybe start there like do supplements help do they do they prolong the growth phase in any way so again disclaimer i'm not coming for anybody's business um <laughs> i we're talking I, generally, generally around generally, supplements the yeah. way i i try to approach it is that when i have a new client someone who's concerned about hair loss or their hair's not growing at the rate they would want it to I ask them to come in and we do like extensive medical history. So I get them to take blood tests and find out if they have any deficiencies or anything kind of like that props up as like a big concern. Um, the only time I truly recommend supplements is when there's a deficiency. So if someone got their blood work back and they were like, uh, iron is deficient, B12 is deficient, by all means go and supplement them because your body isn't able to get the amount it needs to function. So we need to try and hike those back up as soon as possible. When it comes to just like over the counter kind of like supplements you can get, you know, like the um, multivitamins or whatever, yeah. I approach them with caution because if you don't know what you have internally, what your current status is, you could be doing more harm than good. 
most times oh, the cases that you know a lot of them will just go through your system it's not a big deal but i'm like find out what the issue is before you start treating something it's like if i had an uh, a, a ailment anywhere else i'd go to the doctor and try and figure out what is happening so yeah. i can treat it accordingly rather than just being like i'm gonna throw everything at it and just hope one of them mm -hmm. sticks um so just be careful with supplements in that sense when it comes to biotin I don't know where you guys got this information from about biotin and... I don't know either, but it's I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to read thing. the and stuff, and I'm just like, this isn't the biggest indicator for, like, hair growth and stuff. I see some... It works better with nails and things like that, but when it comes to biotin, I'm like, you're actually probably doing more harm than good. Firstly, biotin's really, really available in lots of foods and things like that, so it's very, 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 very rare that you come across someone with a deficiency in biotin because we get it enough from everywhere. It's very, very easy. Yeah, to get like, yeah, from then, fish, um, from all of those different things, everywhere. yeah. The only people that I know can be susceptible to biotin deficiencies, I think it's like pregnant women in some cases, but it's, it's um, okay. genetic. So they might have like a pre disposing to like, they might be like suffer from low biotin and then it's treated differently. Um, if you take biotin, I hope you don't have any heart problems because it can mess around with your blood test results or it can show things that are there or not there. So if you're taking biotin, you're like, oh, I want to go do a blood test. Stop taking biotin for a little while first and then go and um, take your blood test. What okay. people experience as well is that placebo effect. So if I start thinking, mm -hmm. you know, I'm taking all these supplements, I'm doing good things. Yeah, your, your body's going to be like, okay, we're in a healing mode. Or it might we're just tripping, be yeah, we're tricking our body, yeah. yeah. It might just be telling you to but again, your body's just like, look how you taking benefit for what I did. This is not yeah. you. So I'm just like, <laughs> I don't see much difference from people who are in a very healthy state taking and stopping taking supplements. The only thing I would say recommend is that in this country, there's not enough sun for us. So we um, need vitamin D. So it's recommended that most people take vitamin D if you have melanin yeah. in your skin. Um, menstruating yeah. people... Um, if you have very heavy periods, iron is probably going to be a deficiency. Go and yeah. have a blood test once a year. Go and tell your doctor, listen, it's been a year. I ain't had a blood test in a while. Check me for everything. Go and yeah. do that. I've got mine coming up tomorrow. I'm going to go get mine done tomorrow. That's the All best right. thing. So when they tell me, okay, vitamin D is low or iron is low, I have a point that I can work with and say, okay, okay. six months ago, my iron was here. Take supplements, take supplements, take supplements. My iron is here now. Then I can figure out, is it getting better? Is it not? Is there something yeah. that you have like a, a, a plan? I yeah. don't just go and buy anything. We have to be tailored. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Like this, like you're speaking my language because there are so many things that we do and there is not, there's no one size that fits all. I think maybe the biotin thing, to go back to your question of like, how did we even start that? Yeah. Like I feel like, again, it feels like something I've known from a very, very young age where you've been bombarded with so many messages that you literally you see biotin and it's almost like your mental image just comes just up like with hair. Yeah. Like, and you're like, that's the only thing that this ingredient can do for me, yeah. right? Like, and if you think I'm sure biotin has other uses, but I don't, I don't know what they are. All I think of is hair not skin. In, not I mean, in the concentrations that people are consuming it. And it's like, think about your body knows what it's doing. So when you consume fruits, vegetables, food, whatever, nutrients, wherever you get them from, your body's going to break it down and send it off to different places. There's very few things that we can say target specific areas. So we can't just say this targets like skin or hair, or whatever. It might target receptors that are located in those areas. But if you just consume biotin, your body's going to be like, where do I need this? And send it. Then if it doesn't, it's going to get rid of it. So a lot of you have got a very expensive urine and feces. You hear me? Because you're just... <laughs> you're just getting rid of that. Some of us are expensive, you know. Expensive. Yeah, and it's, most of them shouldn't be. So like there's, um, there's a nutritionist I follow on here called Life's Recipe. She's really good because yeah. she lets you know... I like her. Because just eat, eat your food. Eat a really good yeah. balanced diet. I'm like, have you drank water today? I've got my bottle of water here. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. A consultation. I'll go and give um my clients a cup of water and be like, drink. You haven't drank today. Yeah. Do you let me. Fruit? Let's yeah. Listen. Mm. A little water break. Yeah. Let's hydrate. Let's hydrate. I've been drinking one yeah. of those. I've not got that bottle today, but I've got one of those like two liter bottles that I'm trying to to actually finish right um a day because those things obviously 
help. Although at first, I think the water, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard the water will again go to the most vital organs yeah, before yeah. it gets but if the thing okay. is, yeah, if we think about it, we're doing it from a, a holistic standpoint. So we're not just saying we're yeah. doing hair. Hair might be your yeah. entry to better health, but we're just trying to take care of the whole vessel. Everything, um, yeah. We're, we're trying to just make our bodies be, you know, as in best position as they can do. And then it will, yeah. I'm not saying reward us, but it will take care of us the way it needs yeah. to. So if yeah. our body is healthy, we're going to have more chance of it performing the way we want it to. If our body's not healthy, yeah. we need to address those things first before we can think about anything yeah. hair skin nails related it's not gonna it's not gonna be able to sustain it yeah 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 of course um a question has just come in what are your thoughts on using penetrating oils like coconut oil as prior to shampooing to protect against high growth fatigue i have never seen high growth fatigue with my two eyes and so i feel like it doesn't exist <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it can though. Okay, let me... <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it happens, yeah, when people are doing this greenhousing, conditioning overnight, their hair's always wet in it. Um Yeah. I thought that that's what happens when you like you're wearing your conditioner for weeks on end overnight. Yeah, I don't know in it. I, I ain't seen it. I don't think this, okay. it's not something that me and my close you've, friends you've, talk okay. about. It's not our concern okay. because we, we don't teach. But are there any studies? You know, some things I don't even bother to study because I'm just like, if you follow okay. what I say, we're not going to get to that stage in it. Um, okay, I see. I don't use I pure oils. I don't use pure oils. There are oils in some of the, as an ingredient in some of the products that I use, and that's fine, but I will not take a pure oil and put it on someone's hair i used to okay. if you scroll back further off on my page you'll see me with the coconut yeah. oil and undefined color. i've done it all so it's not this is not from a place of oh you know like looking down my nose this is i've tried it yeah. it doesn't work okay. now i have the research okay. to be like duh what were you thinking it didn't yeah. make sense um yeah yeah i don't use um oil some of my clients will use like an oil or butter or something before they wash Usually after taking out a protective style because their hair, they want something to detangle. I would prefer yeah. if they use something water-based because for me, if you're using something oily, buttery, very rich, we're then going to have to struggle to take it out. So the ease that you got in taking it down or whatever, you're going to have to put that elbow grease back into shampoo. And I'm like, you've just delayed that that problem to somewhere else. You just moved it around. Whereas if you use something water-based, you get that kind of like slip but then it's easy to okay. rinse off and get out. Okay, okay. That's a very subtle difference because I, I do quite like the, like coconut oil seems to be the only thing that can melt tangles when I've come out of braids. Mm -hmm. But I didn't appreciate what it was doing on the other end because yeah. I guess... I guess maybe what you might be getting to is that that idea that even mechanical damage can also be a big factor. One. That big one, big, big one, big one, right? Big one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, a question is just coming from Sippin BTS. Uh, so, what does moisturize hair actually feel like without oils? Because I stopped using oils, and I'm not sure how my hair feels right now. Good. I love this question because it's hard to kind of say for individuals. Um, but we are used to kind of like just slip. And if you think, okay, if yeah. you think about like a piece of um, string or so, yeah, it's got texture. Depending yeah. on what kind of like string you've got, it might have like yeah. very big fibers that you're going to feel like the ridges of it and how it was made. Or it might be very smooth, like a piece of wire. Um, yeah. Our hair is curly and it's kinky. So even when we hold it straight, it's still got like, it's not a perfect no, string. No. Like, it's got texture, it moves, you see what I mean? So when you rub your hands down, like you're gonna feel those bumps, those nodules, that texture going down it. You have to know for your hair, and it takes a while to get there if you've always had you know, heavy products on it, what your normal texture feels like. So I kind of say like the best kind of like description of it is when you've finished washing your hair and you've had your conditioner on, when your hair is just kind of like that damp stage after you just finish like rinse everything out, that's kind of when your hair should feel really kind of like smooth and hydrated. That's the kind of feel I want yeah. you to kind of go for. Most yeah. people will feel their hair and be like, if I can feel texture, it's dry. And that's not true. We're just looking for that slip that like, yeah. I don't want to feel anything. I'm like, our hair is not straight. It's, yeah. it's got texture. The more textured yeah. your hair is, the kinkier is, the tighter your curls are, the more you're going to feel. 
The same way when our parents used to bang Vaseline all over our faces, we don't need to have our skin and our hands covered in product to know that it's moisturizing. Mm. Just we get to that feeling where we're like, okay, I know there's enough there. It's just yeah. something you have to kind of get to grips with. It's kind of, it varies for everyone, but that kind yeah. of, I've rinsed the conditioner out of my hair. That's the kind of feel we're going for, if that makes sense. I hope that kind of answers yeah. your question. Yeah. I hope, I think that that's really, really helpful um, to just kind of like have it in the back of our minds. Because again, it goes back to this unlearning thing because I definitely um, have come across the, my hair feels rough. My hair feels, you it's know, like it feels rough, but it's like, it's, 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 okay. yeah. like that, it's just the texture. But I think that it's that kind of like subconscious thing where, we've been so used to it be feeling another way or thinking or look another way yeah another way or look another way so you yeah. don't even realize it. it doesn't necessarily mean that you don't even like your hair it's just that this is what you've been told you've been conditioned. like yeah you've been conditioned so you think oh like you know it feels a bit like sometimes i have it, i'm like oh what's going on but yeah i have to like remind myself um <laughs> like just love love that that like, that say um like your hair looks dry and I'm like, until you can touch it, you don't know for sure. Unless you can see, you've got a very like well-trained eye, you can see split ends or damage. You don't know that if my hair is dry or moisturized because you can't feel it. Yeah. My hair is frizzy, so quite rough. Like if you yeah. think of like a mirror, you've got a smooth surface that light is reflecting off. If you've got a textured surface, the light is going to split off in different ways. So it's not going to yes. give you that high shine. We're, a yes. lot of people are not looking for moisture, they're looking for shine, they're looking for gloss, and that is not the same thing as moisture and it being healthy. Those yeah. are two different, different things. So get away from how it looks. It can look dull because yeah. it's not reflecting light as well, but that's yeah. fine. That's just the nature of our hair. Yeah, that's thank you so much for that as well. Because I saw once um, a magazine that says something like, Your guide to gloss hair. And instantly I was like, you know, like, no, not gloss hair, glass, you know, the way, like, yeah, uh, yeah, that, yeah, that, that, that like glass skin. Skin. Yeah. it was like, it was like glass hair. I'm like, well, what does the concept of glass hair look like when you've got textured hair? Like, I like that context actually doesn't, <laughs> I know, I know, I know, that actually doesn't exist. Um, so that means that that whole title was exclusionary by its very nature, because for us textured gals, that doesn't exist. It would never be gloss. So if anyone's trying to sell us gloss, it would never be glossy. Not in, the way, in the same way, yeah. So that's when like, our hair was relaxed because it's straight. Yeah. You get that mirror yeah. shine. If you have very yeah. uniform curls, you'll get that mirror shine. Or if you've got like waves yeah. when you slick your hair back, you may get that mirror shine. But if you let you have any texture or any frizz or anything, that yeah. shine is going to look different. Yeah. That's just what, what subject is that? <laughs> <laughs> We do physics. Up? Physics. What are you <laughs> physics? <laughs> this is oh joke. my god, guys! See the questions coming. We have time for like one more question. So if you've got a burning question, please shout. Um, okay, so let me do a quick recap. So we talked about does the hair grow? Yes, it grows about half an inch a month. Um, we have spoken about actually often when we think that it's not growing, what's happening is breakage. And we need to think about what is the right protective styles for us. There's no one size that fits all. There's so many things to consider when you're protecting your hair. You might be in braids, but actually, how did you get to braids, yeah. right? Like, did they blow dry to death, apply all kinds of grease? All of those got, look, can you do this with your braids on the first day? If you can't, it's too tight. That's a good, that's a good little test. That's a good little test. When you do that on your first um, day with your braids. I, I, no, no. I told you I was like the client from her. I, they were like, oh, and I was, I was actually in Abidjan. So like, it was like communicate, try to communicate in French. And it was like, I was like, no, yeah. no, no. I was like, Google Translate in too tight. <laughs> But yes, we could because they had yeah. to take it off and make sure they did it right. Um, I'm so sensitive to that right now. But of course, we know we have to also train our aunties that do braids because yeah. they their language is kind of like but it won't last but it won't last but you're like this is not I'm about it last anyway it doesn't even exactly last. it's not exactly it's not about it lasting um are you a fan of leaving conditioners yeah, yeah well if they're water based it sounds like yeah yeah um love a leave-in i think it's a good way to 
top up the moisture in people's hair to keep it hydrated um that's yeah. my go-to i wanted to quickly add do you see how like we've been talking about hair growth and stuff like that um yeah like, maybe a lot of people here watching this maybe later on even like some of the questions are more skewed towards what can i do product wise and what can i do yeah. there if you think about it a lot of us i know for like us too we grew up on like blue magic pink moisturizer yeah. relaxers all them mad products that we would never ever think of using now but our hair still flourished because we had a good yeah. routine because our, we were eating good foods and stuff like that so mm. think about rather than your hair regime what other things you control your health is where, where it's going to be at yeah do you eat well do you sleep well um yeah how stressed are you stress is the big one when i start talking to people about their hair and stuff they're like because you haven't asked me about my hair i'm like it's not important we can get to that what's yeah. your life like what are you doing the rest of the time that's what's more important to me than the products you use. Obviously, we can make changes to use better products, but they have such a, a small impact in the grand scheme of things compared to yeah. how we look after ourselves every other day, every day, you know, yeah. what is going on for us in our lives. That's going to be the big... You can use products worth hundreds and hundreds of pounds. If your stress, yeah. stress level is at 10 and you're not eating, you're not sleeping... Yeah. <laughs> your hair is not going to stay in a scalp for very very long yeah and so yeah. there's nothing you can do your products then or if you're fighting against it we want to make sure that you're good first then we yeah. can start you know building up that side yeah can you break down the science behind that for us mm -hmm. though like why I think is it think that... because it's external they think that it's separate yeah. from their body but it had to grow okay. from underneath and so you have to think what's your internal environment like and okay. um our, as I said, our bodies, they like, there's only like a narrow place where they like to be. They want to stay in this range. So anything that kicks yeah. it out above or below, it's going to go haywire yeah. and be like, what do I have to do to get back within my comfort zone? And yeah. if it's that, I have to divert energy from one place to keep other things Another. going, I will do that. And it will get rid of expendable things. So when our hair isn't, you know, it's breaking or our nails are breaking or we feel tired all the time or our skin is changing, these are all our body saying to us, hello, I'm not happy. Something's happening. Could you pay attention? So usually it's more yeah. of a symptom. If we treat these things as a symptom rather than like a problem on its own. So if it's like my hair is always breaking, it feels really weak and fragile. Cool. Let's go take a blood test. What are your levels saying? Is there any deficiencies? Why is your hair not be able to produce strong strands? Rather than being like, oh, I'm going to put this conditioning products, whatever that gives me, you know, temporary fix. Let's really address what's actually happening yeah yeah that's super super helpful um i was gonna talk, i guess like yeah your point around stress is that actually if something is happening internally your body needs to almost like work harder to mm -hmm. rebalance okay okay got it so can massaging help can massaging your scalp promote hair growth i don't like this question because i why do tell so, so do tell. I, I tell my clients not to massage their scalp because it's not that massaging is bad it's just that most of us are not good at it so when we're doing all this we're more likely breaking and damaging hairs i'm like keep your hands out of your head there are many more ways you can support your hair growth than a massage if you want to have a massage go and get one go and get somebody else to do it for you make it feel nice enjoy yourself yeah. for enjoyment if it's hair yeah. growth there's about 100 other things I can recommend first before scalp massages are going to do anything for your hair. Um, it okay. can increase blood flow, but again, there's other ways you can do that. I just find that when people start to massage their scalp, they often do more mechanical damage to their hair. Okay. And so I try not to promote scalp massages because I don't find them to be beneficial in that sense. But if you want to enjoy relaxation, by all means, go for it. Okay, and also that relaxation if you're stressed, yeah, also potentially help um, reduce that as well. I heard that wash and go is a Western idea. What do you say? I've never heard that before. Um, I do enjoy a wash and go. I feel like a lot of my clients you see on my page now have wash and goes because I offer limited styling, and um, yeah. I'm very conscious about showing a lot of my clients of hair loss sometimes because like, you know it's on the internet yeah. we have to be a bit careful with that um yeah, that's, the, that's the style you usually see me most do it's not the only style i do but i think wash and goes are a great style i feel like it's a tricky one because the pursuit of a wash and go can 
be a, a, a result of of our subliminal programming and you know wanting mm. a defined certain type of curl or whatever yeah. but I like it because it shows my clients a way to wear their hair often for up to a week without having to get in there and do anything with it and um often it'll be the first time or the regular way like they can wear the hair out without feeling so self-conscious because yeah. they're not maybe used to wearing it out so I like it as an alternative of like a quick you style your hair on wash day we don't really have to do much of it until your next wash day I enjoy yeah. it in that way I do realize that there are you know texturism things that come into it that you know yeah. it can get a bit iffy um I just see it as a style as any other yeah yeah what do you think of keeping hair stretched to avoid knots and tangles it's a temporary fix um at some point you need to learn how to manage your own natural texture um okay. i have no problem using heat or having your hair stretched as a style again it's whatever's easiest for you when my hair was loose i used to wear twist outs all the time because again i want to style my hair and wash it and not touch it until i have to wash it again so my hair was technically yeah. stretched um, it wasn't for like a length thing, but I know how to do my hair in all of its forms. So, okay. yeah. At some so, point, you so then, the of your hair, but yeah. So another thing then around heat, uh, around kind of stretching your hair that we were taught was heat protection, mm -hmm. right? And typically the way we've learned to use heat protection from relaxer days um, or any other days, people who didn't use relaxer was to apply oil to the body yeah. of the hair. So we've obviously spoken about oils. What do we use now? If, if, if we've got cold turkey from so, oils, what do we do now? On, um, a heat protectant. Um, if yeah. you think about how, when you're cooking, um, you use oil to fry. And so when you use oils and heat, you fry. And so if it's not chips that you're frying or plantain that you're frying, it's your hair that you're frying. <laughs> this woman is so good with visual analogies. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm literally like, uh... <laughs> we're frying, we're frying. Um, with heat, I'm a big fan of heat. And I think people kind of get a bit, they find my message a bit strange because I'm like, oh no, oil. But I'm like, heat all the time. We can do this, we can colour, we can do whatever. And I'm like, safely. So when people come to me and get heat services, um, my blow dryer stays on medium, uh, medium heat, okay. medium speed. We never see any smoke. We never uh, okay. hear any burning or anything. I'd rather never smell any. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know when you come and you walk in and it's like a smoke machine. It's like an eighties, like a the fire alarm that we go up. Yo, and you got the door open and you... one time, yeah, I think like, this is like before I'd you know come to the good side. I'd spray in <laughs> my hair. And this guy was like, your hair smells burnt. And I was just like, raw. Okay, okay. You don't Ooh. know that that's, like, that's just the smell. Anybody who's straight in their hair knows that. You put the iron yeah. on the stove and it's going to smell burnt. Yeah. And that's what we have yeah. with other nice smelling stuff to cover everything yeah. else. But um, yeah, okay. we, do okay. heat, yeah. we do them sit in. We, we do it low key. Um, with yeah. heat protectants, a lot of people kind of shy away from them because they've got silicones in it. And silicones are bad. But silicones are great because they, again, form a barrier around the, the, the hair that protects it from that direct heat. You can use okay. heat all the time. You just have to be careful with it and know your hair. Um, okay. Yeah, you just have to know your hair. Don't go too high. Know the type of heat your hair can deal with. Like That's why like diffusers, when you're doing wash and go, it's uh, quite low, quite yeah. gentle on the hair. I don't straighten or anything anymore just because of time. But you can still do those well, safely. Um, yeah, you just have to be careful. If it's burning your skin, it's burning your hair. Okay, so that's that's also like very interesting because you mentioned silicones. Because everything with a cone, we've come to kind of just think no cones. Silicone, but actually, sulfate, there's a right way to they're use. They're useful. They're useful. Um, there's the right way to use it. Okay, there's a the right way to use it, and in the heat protectants silicones are great there because they're going to do a job of creating a barrier between your hair strand and that heat to make sure it's smoothed out as well um okay. it goes into when you're washing it off and then that's why you want sulfates because they're going to remove them but somebody somewhere that didn't go to school or went to school that wasn't um i don't know in it but <laughs> <laughs> um, they just got misconstrued and i feel like science can be very prohibitive in terms of like if you don't understand the jargon that they use it can 
you know, you'll have one ingredient and be like, oh my God, this is really harmful. But then you see that ingredient somewhere else and it's very, very useful. We have to understand that toxicity and stuff like that, it, it ranges and it varies upon use. Um, yeah. Yes, we do have a problem with black hair products using wild things for us. But most of the time, yeah. if it's on your shelf in a shop, it's usually been tested and it's safe. Um, okay. So you can kind of trust it in that sense. Okay. Just know what you're using them for. Okay, okay. Keen to get braids, but concerned about washing my hair and scalp whilst they're in. What are your thoughts? Um, if you know you're not going to wash your hair while your braids are in, one, don't get braids. Or two, um, don't keep them in for very long. Or use an alternative... Or, uh, blah, Alternative method to cleanse your scalp. There's another trichologist, okay. Afope. Um, what's her surname? It's just escaped my mind. But she has a YouTube channel where she's just uploaded a video, like probably like in the last week, of her washing okay. her braids. And um, there's other okay. people that do it. We only focus on the scalp. So all this, yeah, I don't care about. Keep your scalp clean. Yeah. That's whatever yeah. style you have. Your scalp must be kept clean. That's the main decider. So if you can't do that, I guess you can't do braids. What if you're swimming though? We swim every week. We don't care about, you know, hair doesn't stop us from enjoying life. Get me? You get in the pool, you get your swim cap. There's the, um, what's the name of the cap now? Soul cap or another one? That Soul do cap. Hair. Yeah. We've got one of those. We go swimming. With coloured hair, we go swimming. We enjoy. Um, when I come out, that's my wash day. When I get home, I wash my hair. It's done. And nice. if I can go with coloured no. hair, you can go swimming. I beg, donk your head so in the water. So in 2022, no yeah, longer swimming. will swimming. our hair keep us yes. from exercising and swimming. No, no, no. The hair don't stop us from doing nothing. At night time, exactly. kick back the wig, show them the cane rows. Like, we're enjoying life regardless of what your hair looks yeah. like. The more we can kind of like leave each other alone with our hair, the more everyone else will leave us mm. alone. Because I feel like yeah. sometimes we will hold each other to those standards that we've been told. Like, oh, your hair looks yeah. messy or you can't. I yeah. beg, the rain, the shine, nothing's stopping me from... Enjoy it. it. In, I'll go out and be like, yes, free wash day. 2022, <laughs> the year of enjoying our hair Enjoy in many. all its glorious yeah, forms, yeah. okay? We and we're, we're not like... It. Yeah, we're not stopping ourselves from getting involved. Oh, my God. Ebony, you're a fountain of knowledge. This oh, has been so amazing. And like your visuals, your analogies, like I'm obsessed with them. Oh, I used to teach I feel kids, like... I have to make it, I have to make it interesting because otherwise it's riot in my classroom. Yeah, <laughs> you have to break things down in a way that we understand, like the oil and the frying. I can never get that image out of my head. <laughs> frying your hair, okay? <laughs> I can never get that image out of my head. Oh, you're amazing. We're going to have to you're do welcome, this again soon. Just, time, this man. is you fantastic. Know, thank you, thank hey, you. Damarella. Oh, yes. I'm so glad that Mark Zuckerberg let Listen, this happen. They allowed us. They allowed us today. Um, yeah, I know. I know. Exactly. We need to build our own separate so we don't have to ask him to allow us. Guys. <laughs> More lives, please. Okay, we got you. What topics? Actually, whilst we're here, quick research. Yeah, love what topics, topics do you guys want to hear? What topics do you want to hear about? Please drop it in the comments before we hang up. Them. Also, I have a podcast called Snatch Edges where I talk about um, hair loss and hair growth and stuff like this. So a lot of the things have been covered in more detail. I have a column with Galden Magazine called Afro Answers where yeah. I talk about this stuff as well. If you have suggestions or things that you want us and Hey Cara to cover, please let us know. You know, we don't bite, mm -hmm. we don't shout too much. We, we laugh, we make jokes, you know, because we've all been there, we've all been there. There's no judgment. We're just here to have fun. It, this is a safe space. Like, like I have, like, I have, I have fried my hair and yeah. the alarm went off. Okay, I've Listen. done that. So we're all here together. Low density hair. Okay, we'll add that to the list. Let's cover that. I'm sure porosity is in there somewhere and I can already see in her eyes in Ebony's eyes and she's going to have some <laughs> very, very interesting thoughts on that hair loss after COVID. Okay, it's going to come back. We've got it's going to come back. It's, okay. it's going to come back. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. All right. Once again, thank you so much. You are just freaking awesome. Love you too, So girl. much fun to be around. Love you loads. Take care. Take care, everyone. Have a good evening. Have a good evening, everyone. We'll do Bye. this again. Bye.